So Matt Diabella did a video a couple weeks back called Is Minimalism Dead? And he showed how it's not dead, but it's trending downward. And I've, I've received a few questions and comments since then like, do you think minimalism's dead? Is it dying? And I don't think it's dead, but I do think it's hard. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. If we haven't met before, I'm married to Tom and we have four kids ages six through 11. And so it's tough because on one hand, it's kind of like, oh, is minimalism dead? And at first I'm like, well, that's a really clickbaity title, Matt, right? <laughs> you know, like it's not dead, come on. But as I was watching his video and I'm like, oh, it is trending down. I'm like, I get it. Minimalism is hard. And I think there's two main reasons that it's hard. And so one is that when we are decluttering our home, we are faced with every wrong purchase we have made over the last however many years. And I just remember going through our house and the toys I had gotten at garage sales, the kids clothes, we could have clothed a hundred kids. The extra clothes I had and Tom had, kitchen stuff. I mean, everything I was like, why did I buy this? Why did I waste our money on this? And it, it's, it's a very exhausting process to have to go through this and make decision after decision after decision. And for some of us, it comes a little bit easier. And I love reading the comments and the testimonies of those of you who have been working to declutter your house and, and how good it is. But for others, I know we've been talking about this recently. Like, what if I struggle with every decision? Decision. What if I overthink it? And we had a video uh, last week or the week before about it. So I will link to that because it's not always easy. It is decision after decision. We get decision fatigued, we get overwhelmed, we get stressed out. And it's funny because it's like, well, that's what I'm trying to avoid, right? I'm trying to have my house be more peaceful and enjoyable and now I'm stressed out trying to declutter it, right? And we close the closet door and we walk away. And I, I totally understand that. But I want to encourage you today to keep going and to keep pushing through because what's waiting on the other side is so worthwhile and it is so 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 good so we have decision fatigue and just overwhelm that works against us when we're decluttering and trying to pursue minimalism the other thing that is working against us so hard is marketing and matt touched on this in in his video and he said as long as we have companies that are promising us that they are going to fix our problems through the next product we're always gonna struggle with overconsumption. And it's tough, I think, when we all look around us, I feel like we've all allowed stuff and physical things to take a, a wrong role in our life. We have elevated it to this position of importance in our life of, it relates to security and success and well-being and status and comfort and so many things we look to for things. And I'm not blaming any of us because there are billions of dollars in marketing spent every single day to get us to buy stuff. When we look around, I mean, you hear the numbers of, oh, all the advertisements we see every day. There is so much money and science and manipulation put into getting us to buy things. And I remember I my background is in marketing and one of the main ways they tell you to market a product, it's like, okay, I just got assigned a, a project and I have to market this water bottle. And what you do is you find a pain point. What is the pain point that you are gonna solve with this product? And you know what? If you hire me to do your marketing, it doesn't matter if it's a good product. It doesn't matter if you could do it with this water bottle or with a stinking glass at your house, right? It doesn't matter because you hired me to market your product and I'm gonna make sure everyone thinks that this is the best water bottle on earth and it is gonna solve all of your problems. It's gonna make you lose weight. It's gonna cause you to be healthier and happier and blah, 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 right? And so all of these products are being sold to us to say, we know you have problems right now. We know you're tired and you're overwhelmed and you're stressed out, but don't worry, we have a product for that. We'll make you feel prettier and younger and more energetic and happier. Just buy our product, just buy our product, right? And so it's like, I was thinking about this. I'm like, so you have a handful of us over here on YouTube and other places that are minimalist or like simple living, like, you know, the minimalist and Matt Duell and Joshua Becker and all our other friends that you're getting to meet through our our mega motivation collaborations, right? So you have like us little people over here saying like, guys, 
Minimalism is awesome. Get the junk out of your house and it is so good. You'll never go back. It's so, so good. And I feel like our voice is like this big <laughs> compared to the gazillion dollars of marketing saying, no, no, don't listen to them. Buy more stuff, right? That's going to solve your problems, right? And so that's why I don't, I don't want any of us to feel bad or to get down on ourselves because this voice and pressure and prominence is so big and loud. It's so big and loud, right? And so for the rest of us who are like, I just want to declutter my house, right? It's very hard to disconnect from that and to push away from it and not at every turn be tempted to buy something else. So it is very understandable why minimalism maybe isn't trending anymore in searches or why people have given up because it is hard. It is a lot of hard work. It's a lot of emotional work. There's just, there's so much mental energy that goes into decluttering your home. But my hope is that you will continue to work on ways to shut out the marketing. Like for myself, I read fiction books at night because I don't want to go on Instagram or Facebook because I'll see stuff to buy. I don't want to watch TV because I'll see stuff to buy. Um, I don't like I really like doing pickup like grocery pickup and stuff at stores now because I don't want to go inside and be tempted to buy stuff. I really try to stay away from like the dollar store and the dollar spot all those places that I would be tempted to buy stuff. And so I've had to be very intentional about blocking this stuff out and it's good and it gets easier. Um, but then also on the other hand, surrounding yourself with people that are pursuing this same lifestyle and listening to their books and their podcasts and watching the YouTube videos and keeping this input going because it really is easy to get discouraged and give up to feel like I've made two steps forward, eight steps backwards. So to continue to surround yourself with people that are choosing the same thing, even if it's virtually, right, that are promoting the same message and and encouraging you and giving you tips. I mean, like, I'm really sorry you're an overthinker. Here's a couple ways that we can overcome that. But also I'll link to um, the video. I know a video that has really resonated with many of you was about, about the hierarchy of happiness um, and how really like material stuff takes us, it's the first level, right? But then beyond that, our happiness, it, none of it is tied to material stuff. And so reinforcing that message that this stuff is not it's not leading to happiness. But one other thing that I was reminded of recently, um, I saw this comment about a mixing bowl that I thought was so good. Um, and the gal said that she decluttered her glass, uh, a glass bowl from her kitchen because I don't think I need it. I haven't used it recently. And then she went to make a chocolate cake for her dad and she was like, oh yeah, I use it as a double boiler to make the chocolate frosting. But what, what she said was so good. She said, do you know what I did though? She was like, I just used a different bowl. So I just also want to leave you with the encouragement that we're very creative and resourceful as human beings. Like our minds are so fantastic. And so that's what our grandparents did in, in the generations before them, right? That we just, we just use something else. And that's why I can say, yes, we've decluttered 80 or 85% of our stuff and we don't miss any of it because I just use something else or I don't use it and I don't think twice about it. Or I think, well, at least I don't have to maintain that item anymore. I don't have to take care of that bowl anymore for the one time a year that I use it. And so I know often it's seen, it feels scary to get rid of so much stuff because you're like, it's, it's always the, but what if, but what if? And so I, I really want to encourage you that you don't miss it. You use something else. You go without it and you don't really care. You don't miss this stuff that you're getting rid of. I feel like we could go another 10% in our house and not miss it. Because again, like I mentioned in the beginning, We've been promoting stuff too much in our life and it is not the stuff that makes us happy. And I think we have even more of an awareness of that now over the past year and a half. It is not the physical things that are giving us security and making us happy. It is relationships and people and growing and learning and helping other people. That is what matters. And so really saying like, yep, I have promoted this stuff. I've given it a place of importance in my life that it does not deserve. And so I am gonna move this stuff out of my house, trusting that what is on the other side is so good, so, so good. Someone asked us the other night on a, a YouTube live, they were like, what's been the hardest thing with minimalism? And uh, for sure, it's the actual process of getting there. But once you're there, it's so good. Th living as a minimalist is not a sacrifice. It's not hard. It's not miserable. I don't miss it. Living the other way with all the stuff was hard. 
that was the hard part. Living this way, it, this is not hard. This is awesome and freeing and liberating and less stressful and less overwhelming and so, so good. So I know it's difficult. I know it's hard at times, but I really wanna encourage you to keep pushing through because you you deserve that. You deserve to have that peace of mind and to not always feel so frantic and overwhelmed. And I really, <laughs> this makes me cry because I care about you and I want this for you. You deserve that. You 100% deserve that. And I really want that for you. So no, I don't think minimalism is dead. I do think it's hard at times, but I think if we continue to stick together and working together, uh, you can get there. And again, if you don't want to be an all out minimalist, I hear that all the time. <laughs> you stop where you're comfortable and that's totally fine. We can still be friends and I still want to help you and encourage you. So I love you. I am so grateful for all of your support. support and I'm so grateful for those of you who share our videos and invite others into this process because everyone needs it. So thank you for that as well. But I love you. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you again soon.